Hello, a great welcome to this presentation. So today we will discuss about an unfamiliar item that is on the analysis of vertical vessel foundations. Obviously, you know that this is an item that is relevant in petrochemical refinery and power plants. So before getting into the details, I want to tell you that uh, my personal uh, uh, YouTube channel uh, uh, has a rich collection of uh, various uh, tutorials. Uh, for example, uh, it has got around 30 to 40 tutorials on Idea Statica. It has uh, 15 20 tutorials on Abacus. It has uh, very good um, explanatory tutorials uh, using the Plaxis and many other industrial applications. So, I would request you to subscribe to this uh, very useful uh, channel by clicking the button on the right corner button. Okay, so let us get into the details. So, first of all, what exactly is the purpose of this presentation? So let me tell you what these vertical vessels are. These vertical vessels are important equipment items and where they can find these items, these are normally installed in refineries, power plants, petrochemical plants, etc. So you can see that this is an important component you can find in a very useful uh, um, industrial installations. So considering that these are the standalone items with large aspect ratios in industry you will find in some of the vessels you know as tall as 40 to 50 meters so these are basically having very, very large aspect ratios that is h by d ratios and they are subjected to very large vertical and lateral loads which means that their foundation analysis and design shall be taken up with great care now what does this presentation provide you this presentation will have some recommended procedures and guidelines for the analysis of vertical vessel foundations supported directly on soil. We will take up the pile foundation cases in a separate video. Now please also note that this presentation has two more companion videos namely one design of vertical vessel foundations and second video is on a sample calculation report for the analysis and design of vertical vessel foundations. And remember that the playlist for these two combining videos will be provided at the end. So, first of all, I would like to tell you that this video is based on a reference document, namely Process Industry Practices Structural PIP, we call it as PIP standard, STE 03350 Vertical Vessel Foundation Design Guide. A snapshot of the front page of this standard is provided over here. Here you can see that it is known as a PIP document. And this is uh, basically uh, provides the practices to be followed in the process industry. And this uh, document is named as Vertical Vessel Foundation Design Guide. So this document is the basis of this video presentation. Now let me tell you what are the important set of input documents to be used before proceeding to the analysis and design of vertical vessel foundations. Obviously, the first and the most important one would be the geotechnical investigation report. And this report should provide you the allowable soil bearing pressures to be used based on the soil strength, permissible total and differential settlements. In addition to this soil bearing pressure values, it should also provide you other important parameters, for example, the unit weight of soils, the void ratios, and also the presence of groundwater etc. So the next one is the applicable codes. Every analysis and design should be based on a set of applicable codes. And only based on the codes you will be able to compute the important loads such as the wind and the seismic load. And also for the verification of the size and the design you need to create a set of load combinations for both the service and the strength considerations which shall be taken from the applicable codes. And the third most important one is the approved certified vendor drawings. Remember that the vertical vessels are obviously fabricated and it is supplied by a different vendor. And accordingly, all the details pertinent to the, vert the vertical vessel need to be taken from a separate drawing. And this drawing will provide you all the vessel details. For example, the diameter of the vessel, the connection details, the height of the vessel, and then uh, all the details like the platforms, connected piping, etc. 
and it will also provide you all the loads. So these are the three important documents to be used and ensure that whenever you use a vendor drawing that it is an approved one and it is certified by the concerned authorities. Okay, now let us discuss in brief about the loads. So the loads that need to be considered for the analysis and design of a foundations for vertical vessels broadly include the vertical loads, the piping thermal loads as well as the lateral loads. Now let us uh, first focus on the vertical loads and this can be broadly classified as one is the erection weight PF and this inclu in include the fabricated weight of vessel only. Next we have the empty weight PE which includes the above fabricated weight along with the weight of internals, piping, insulation, fireproofing and platforms. And the third one is the operating weight which includes the above empty weight plus the weight of operating liquid or the catalyst. Then we have the test weight PT and the test weight in some cases may be avoided. And this test weight obviously it includes the empty weight plus the weight of water required for the hydrostatic test. And then we have the dead load D. And this in is including only the vessel's foundation weight which is nothing but the combined weight of the footing plus pedestal plus the overburden soil. So that's all regarding the vertical loads. Now let us talk about the piping thermal loads. And remember that this piping thermal loads, this is an important load in many critical vessels. And this includes basically the thrust from the connected piping, essentially due to the thermal expansion. And normally these loads are provided by the stress department of the concerned piping department. And the engineer need to ensure that the piping thermal loads are adequately taken care in the foundation analysis and design. The thing is that the criticality comes when the, such a piping is connected to the vessel at a larger heights causing a very large overturning moment at the foundation base. Now we have the most important one that's the lateral loads that normally governs the sizing of the foundation and the lateral loads can be broadly classified as the wind loading W and obviously wind loads are to be calculated based on the applicable loads for example, you have got AAC7, you can also use the Euro course, Indian course, etc. And ensure that when you calculate the wind loading, you should consider the equipment as a non-building structure. That is important. And the computed wind loads should include vessel platforms, ladders and external piping. Then the next one is the seismic loading E. Again, it needs to be computed strictly as per the applicable loads only, applicable course only. And it should be computed taking the equipment as a non-building structure. And here I would like to tell you that though in many cases the wind loads and the seismic loads are directly provided by the vendor on the vendor drawings, the design engineer in charge need to ensure that such loads are strictly computed as per the applicable loads. So this means that the design engineer need to make a separate calculation of the wind loads and the seismic loads and compare it with the vendor provided values. In case of discrepancies, he need to report such things to the vendor directly and get a final confirmation of the loads before proceeding for the analysis and design of the foundation. Okay, now just now we were discussing about the primary loads. Now let us talk about the load combinations. Obviously we need to consider two set of combinations, one for the sizing and the other for the design. The combinations for the sizing, normally we call it as a service load combinations. And this shall be used to check the soil bearing pressures as well as the foundation stability against overturning and sliding. So in order to have a good familiarity with the, how the service load combinations look like, I have provided below a set of service load combinations prepared in line with the AC requirements. So here you can see that I have provided around six combinations. For example, the first one, it talks about the operating conditions without any lateral loads. The second one, it provides you regarding the under the empty loading with wind and or earthquake or the operating loads with or without wind and earthquake. And finally, you can see that the first last one it is something like a hydro test condition accompanied by one fourth of the wind. So you need to formulate the service load combinations strictly as per the applicable loads and use them judiciously during the calculations. 
Now let me just uh, tell you something about the guidelines used for the footing sizing. Obviously, just like we do for other uh, items, the foundation need to be checked for two things. First one regarding the bearing pressure and the second one check should be on the overturning. Now in this case, the soil bearing pressure shall be checked on the diagonal of the octagonal foundation. Now based on the magnitude of the applied load, two cases are possible. In case one, the applied moments are low so that E by D is less than 0.122. Remember E is nothing but the eccentricity defined as the applied moment divided by the vertical load computed at the foundation base and D is nothing but the base dimension of the octagonal foundation. Now in this case, when E by D is less than 0.122, the total octagonal footing area will be will be in compression. That means there is no loss of contact, and the maximum and minimum pressures shall be computed using the formula, conventional formula, F equal to P by A plus or minus of M by Z D. Remember that Z D is nothing but the elastic section modulus of the foundation base about the diagonal. And now we have a second case where in the applied moments are very large making the E by D ratio greater than 0 0.12, 122. In such case, the total octagonal footing area will not be in compression and we need to compute the maximum pressure using the formula F equal to L into P by A. And remember here that P is the vertical load and A is the total base area of the foundation and the factor L need to be computed using a graph that is provided in the next slide based on the E by D ratios. Now here as you can see that the two cases are represented and remember that the bearing pressure for the foundation sizing need to be obtained on the diagonal as it is marked over here. So we consider the bending of the foundation about this diagonal and in case 1 as I already told you the total foundation base will be under compression and in case 2 there is a loss of contact and remember here that uh, the KD, remember uh, this is nothing but is a loss of contact and similar to the factor L, the factor K also need to be taken up from the graph. So now let me take you to the graph that we will use for the computation of uh, the factor L as well as the factor K. Now this is the chart which I am I was referring to. Here you can see that on one axis we have got the the E by D ratios for example here you can see that it starts with 0 0.1, 0 0.15 goes to 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3 like that and on the right side again we have the marked values of here you can say that L and you, here you can see that it varies from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 etc and on the left side we have the values of K are again marked over here as 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 etc. Which means that for any value of E by D, what you need to do is that you draw a vertical line and where it intersects for example the L curve, you draw a horizontal and find out the corresponding value of L and again find out where this vertical line intersects the plot for K. For example here you can see that this is the line for K and then draw a horizontal to the left to find out the K factor. This is how you should use this graph for the computation of the factor L that provides you the maximum pressure, bearing pressure and also the factor K used to find out the loss of contact. So this is all regarding the checking of the bearing pressure and now we have got the last check that is again important that is the footing verification for the stability. Now, as you know, the stability ratio is defined as the ratio of the resisting moment to the overturning moment and this is, shall be computed about the edge of the rotation or the foundation edge. And remember, as per the project specification or as per the codes, you have to select what must be the acceptable stability ratios. But the normal values are something like this. The minimum stability ratios shall be taken as 1.5 during the erection and it shall not be less than 2 under operating conditions. So this is all about the check for the overturning and the final check is against the sliding. 
and ensure that the minimum safety factor against the sliding shall be 1.5 and you can use a coefficient of friction of 0.4 for cast in place foundations for the computation of the frictional force and normally the passive earth pressures that is obtained from the backfill are not considered while investigating for the sliding feature that's all about this presentation so if you have uh, any comments please let me know so thanks a lot for listening